In 2007, a hydropower company based in Sichuan Province, China, set out on the most ambitious and challenging hydroelectric project in the world to become the largest underground power station. They began excavating massive tunnels under the Jingping Mountain, four large 16.7 kilometer long tunnels carrying water east, two 17.5 kilometers for employee commuters and a water drainage tunnel. Today, this is the basis of the world's deepest and largest underground physics laboratory and also the world's largest and cleanest dark matter search facility. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and this video is everything you need to know about the China Jinping Underground Laboratory, CJPL for short. In the vast universe, visible matter varying in size from a grain of dust to a planet like Earth or a nebula, these account for just 5% of the universe. The remaining 95% consists of dark matter and dark energy. The probability of dark matter interacting with visible matter is so small that it's difficult to detect it directly, while ubiquitous cosmic rays can also greatly interfere with our efforts to detect dark matter. Therefore, a laboratory that can shield cosmic rays and provide an experiment environment with facilities with an extremely low radiation background becomes a prerequisite for dark matter detection. Underground laboratories are typically used not because the dark matter is concentrated there, but because their deep underground location provides a natural shielding against this interference. When physicists at Tsinghua University heard about the deep tunnels in Sichuan, they saw a golden opportunity for a unique underground lab. They negotiated with the hydropower company to excavate laboratory space in the middle of the tunnels. The first phase, CJPL1, was completed and put into use at the end of 2010, featuring a room capacity of about 4,000 cubic meters. It's buried under 2,400 meters of rocks, so like eight Eiffel Towers stacked end to end. And it's not even a straight drop. They had to excavate 8,750 meters across so vehicles can get in and out. Digging tunnels for CJPL involves significant challenges due to the depth and the geological conditions. The tunnels had to be excavated through hard marble rock, which presented a significant engineering challenge and involved a careful balance of drilling and controlled blasting to break through the marble. They also had to reinforce the excavated areas to ensure stability under the high water pressure within the rock. And what I mean by that is because the great depths that we're working at, the immense weight of the overlying rock and soil layers exert pressure on any groundwater present in the rock's pores or cracks. And this can lead to high water pressure in these deep underground environments. In simple terms, imagine a sponge soaked in water. When you press down on the sponge, the water is squeezed out due to the pressure. Similarly, the rock deep underground is like this sponge, with the weight of the earth above it pressing down and creating high water pressure within any water-bearing layers or features in the rock. Handling this pressure is a critical aspect of deep underground construction because it can affect the stability and safety of the excavated spaces. Besides the challenges presented by excavating through marble, the CJPL faced other issues. Initially, the air ventilation in the lab was insufficient. And this led to dust accumulation and radon gas buildup. This radioactive gas naturally occurs from the decay of uranium in soil, rock, and water, and is colorless, odorless, and tasteless, making it very difficult to detect without special equipment. Long-term exposure to high levels of radon can lead to lung cancer, and it's the second leading cause of lung cancer in the USA. To solve this issue, they dug additional ventilation pipe. But besides radon, the radiation of the marble was relatively low, but the lab was lined with concrete to reinforce it, 
and this has higher natural radioactivity than desired for such a low background laboratory. So to solve this, the engineers adopted a special waterproof structure of 10 protective layers of things like liquid rubber to block out moisture and radon to help reduce radiation that might affect their search for dark matter. The protection is layered on the surface of the cavern to a thickness of 10 centimeters, but it blocks 99% of the radon gas released by the surrounding rocks. The second phase of the project saw massive expansions to the space, and this included JUNA, an experiment to measure the rates of astrophysically important stellar nuclear reactions. In 2022, Juno revealed the origins of calcium found in the first stars. They successfully verified the hypothesis that calcium comes from a key breakout reaction of the carbon, nitrogen and oxygen cycle. But last week saw another expansion of CJPL, the deep underground and ultra low radiation background facility for frontier physics experiments or DERF for short. It went operational after about three years of construction. It boasts the deepest, largest, ultra clean underground space for scientific research, going from 4,000 cubic meters to a whopping 330,000 cubic meters of space. The depth of this laboratory means that it's exposed to just a tiny flux of cosmic rays, just a hundred millionth of that found on the surface of the Earth. DERF is designed to tackle key questions in physics, with its priority being the direct detection of dark matter particles. With such an ultra low background environment and unprecedented sensitivity, it could give us the first ever direct detection of dark matter, which would be a major breakthrough in our understanding of the universe. But they'll also make more precise measurements of neutrino oscillations. Check out my video on neutrino oscillations if you haven't already to learn more about exactly what this is. But essentially this could shed light on the nature of neutrino particles and their role in the universe. And lastly, another research area is for the search of new double beta decay modes. Double beta decay is a rare type of radioactive decay in which two neutrinos in an atomic nucleus simultaneously transform into two protons whilst releasing two electrons and two anti-neutrinos. This process is important for understanding the properties of neutrinos, particularly whether neutrinos are their own antiparticles. Discovering new modes of double beta decay, i.e. variations of how this rare nuclear event can actually occur, can provide insights into neutrino masses and the fundamental nature of these particles. It'll be exciting to see what science comes out of this amazing facility, but that's all that I have time for this week. As always, Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.